Tis the season to watch Nintendo Prime. Fa la 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 la. Okay, hey everyone. Welcome to another Nintendo Prime video. And we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch in 2021. In particular, the Switch Pro in 2021. And why I think it's going to happen. And what the smoke is all leading to. Now, we know Nintendo Switch is probably going to have a killer 2021. We know Zelda's 35th anniversary is coming up. Metroid's 35th anniversary is coming up. Uh, Pokemon Snap is coming up. We know about Bayonetta 3 that's been in the works. Metroid Prime 4 has been in the works. Although, I don't really think that's coming next year. But, hey, we can all dream. Uh, I think a Zelda 35th anniversary is coming. Maybe Breath of the Wild 2. Maybe not. I have no idea there. We need to see the game again before we could talk about it. Uh, and, obviously, well, you don't really need to see the game. We just had Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I guess there's a lot of reasons you could have to talk about Breath of the Wild 2 right now. Uh, but none of it's because we have new information about the game. It's more so, let's have some theories. Let's have some speculation. Uh but we also know about like Monster Hunter Rise coming next year. We have obviously a new Super Mario 3D World, uh, which is a Wii U port with the additional content of Bowser's Fury. So that should be interesting. Uh, I don't know how much new content, if it's just one world, if it's, you know, one world with eight levels, or I, we have no idea what's going to happen there. But I am really, really, really excited because there's been a lot of rumors for Switch Pro over the years. And it feels like when we're about to hit the fourth year of Switch, which happens on March 31st of, or I shouldn't say March 31st, March 3rd of 2021, uh, that is exciting times because it's about the time that we should get a, re a, a true revision. And I'm not talking about the red box switch, which is one of these three boxes back here, or the switch light. I'm talking about like a new Nintendo 3DS, a DSi, a PlayStation 4 Pro, or an Xbox One X. Raw. I mean, we, I, I have the Xbox Series X right here. So, I mean, I'm all about that X. Heck, the, the One X is right there. I, dude, I, unless I'm just becoming a Microsoft shill these days, right? Where's my PlayStation 5? I mean, I smashed the PlayStation 3 with a sledgehammer. Remember that? Anyways, uh, it's about time for a Switch Pro. And we've had reports and rumors about it practically for years. If you go back to 2019, I think that's when we really got our first legit possible information about a Switch Pro. And that is because Nintendo had a publicly announced partnership with Sharp for IGZO displays. This is important because IGZO displays are one of the newer display technologies out there uh, that are starting to get implemented in higher end uh, smart devices. And they basically allow for higher resolution with lower power drop, better color accuracy, higher frame rates, all that jazz, high refresh rates, I should say. The frame rates are determined by the hardware inside, not the screen, although the screen has to have the refresh rate to display higher frame rates, so there, whatever. The point is, it is a great technology that can improve the battery life of Switch while giving you a better screen. Uh, so that is really, really cool, nearly bezel-less type display for screen technology, but we haven't seen Nintendo actually use it, and all of the current, uh, you know, when the Switch Lite came out, we thought maybe, when uh, the, the revision Switch came out, you know, the Redbox Switch, we thought maybe, the version 2, turns out, not. Nah, they're still not using that display technology. Now, Nintendo, notably, has opened up a new manufacturing line with Sharp. Now, Sharp is partially owned by Foxconn, which is running one of Nintendo's other manufacturing lines. But the point is that Sharp is not wholly owned by Foxconn and is the makers of the IGZO technology. Is this manufacturing line, which we presumed was created to keep up with demand for Switch, is it actually exclusively pumping out IGZO displays, pumping out Nintendo Switch Pros? It, it, I, I mean, it kind of adds up because that IGZO display thing isn't even a rumor. It's a legally binding contract that publicly exists. Nintendo has a contract for those displays. Whether or not they ever use that contract is a completely another story. But again, they had Sharp open up a new manufacturing line. They're the makers of that kind of adding up here we have reports obviously from bloomberg and wall street journal over the years about new screens coming about new controllers maybe coming uh particularly about the ability to output to 4k now whether it's just the ability to stream 4k like a 4k hulu 4k netflix in this case 4k hulu 4k youtube because those are the only video programs on the switch in north america anyways uh, actually not even in north america in the u.s hulu is not available worldwide uh it'd be interesting to see if we start to get disney plus and others because now that disney basically owns hulu 
kind of makes sense to get a Disney Plus, at least. I don't know. I don't know what the contract disputes are there. But uh, it could just be that, hey, look, we're going to include a 4K upscaler. Maybe there's going to be a new dock technology, uh, and we're going to get 4K upscaling. Maybe we are going to get the latest and greatest tech. We've heard that from Nintendo themselves, from Shintura Furukawa, saying we are working on the latest and greatest technology, looking at battery life at five to six hours for future future systems. So, hey, are we going to end up getting a really, really powerful switch that uses DLSS 2.0 to hit those 4K resolutions, supporting the 4K dream. I don't know. But what I do know is we now have possibly new information that a Switch Pro is coming because Nintendo seems to be potentially discontinuing the Nintendo Switch dock, and they might have started in a particular big market for them in the UK. Let me reach over with my Google Gadget arm to grab the Reddit thread. Um, so this user on Reddit says the 2019 Nintendo Switch dock, uh, Switch dock, uh, since 2019, the Nintendo Switch dock has been out of stock in the UK. Till this day, it remains out of stock. So I reached out to the Nintendo UK support to see what they had to say on the matter. This is the discussion. Dear Sade, 40. Thank you for contacting us and placing an inquiry. A member of our Nintendo customer support team has looked into your inquiry and added a response. For your records, your original query was, when will the Switch dock set be available to purchase again? The product has been out of stock for some time in the UK, whereas in the US, Japan, and Europe, it's been readily available since the product's release. Can the dock be available once again? It's important for us users to want to be able to have a Switch dock in every room that has a TV, a dock for traveling, or just as a backup. After further investigation, we can confirm the following. Dear Sade, thanks for getting in contact with Nintendo. I am really sorry, but we have discontinued the Nintendo Switch dock set in the UK. Therefore, the UK store will no longer stock this on our site. I apologize for the inconvenience this may have caused. If you require any further information or assistance, please feel free to contact a member of our support team via your account. Kind regards, Sophie, Nintendo Official UK Store. This means for those that live in the UK and want to switch dock, they need to import, buy used, or go third party. And we all know there's been issues with third party docks over the years, uh, and some people being fearful of trusting them. It's actually become much better at this point than it was back in 2017. So it's a lot safer to use third party docks than it once was, especially newer manufactured third party docks. But again, I understand if there's some concern because Switch has a kind of strange out of spec power delivery system for USB C. I get it. No one wants to brick their system. So I'm left here wondering what does this all mean like this is just the uk right we're not talking about them discontinuing manufacturing of the nintendo switch dock i mean they still got to bundle it in with nintendo switches so they're clearly not done making the dock but are they slowly starting with the uk and potentially maybe us in 2021 uh, are they going to start making less and less of these Nintendo Switch docks available to purchase outside of buying a bundled Switch. And I say bundled Switch because if they get rid of the ability to buy these readily, which by the way, speaking as a customer in the United States, it actually hasn't been that easy to buy one of these brand new for most of this year. It's been very short in supply. Most retail outlets aren't even carrying it anymore. So arguably, even though this is a UK situation, it might have already started in the US where they might have at some point this year stopped stocking it. Now, it's not a hot ticket item in the first place. So you could say, oh, maybe it makes sense to stop offering it. But hey, I've got multiple switch docks in my home and there's going to be other people that would like to as well that don't want third party docks. Yes, it's kind of a niche grab. You know, it's not like when people want an extra controller, that's going to be more commonly purchased, but it is something that there will be a a subset of consumers that want. So the Nintendo official store should offer a bare minimum. But what if it's going out of manufacturing because they're working on a brand new Switch and this new Switch, this Switch Pro won't be compatible with that dock. So why sell extra docks where people that have a Switch Pro might think they could just plop it in and be good to go? What if it's not compatible? What if it's not compatible because the dock is different? The power delivery is dif- different. The uh, chipset inside it that outputs the 4K is different. What if something's different with the dock 
that makes us so, hey, why are we selling these extra docks that people aren't going to be able to use? They're only going to be able to use it with the OG Switch. And this obviously brings up what else, what other cross incompatible are, are, are like old Joy-Con not going to be able to be used with the Switch Pro. Uh, the Pro Controller, I presume, will be okay because it's just a Bluetooth thing. They could easily make that work. But are there going to be other Switch accessories? You know, is Ring Fit Adventure suddenly not going to work with it because it, it the ring the ring is not made for whatever new Joy-Con they're going to use? Or are they going to use the same Joy-Con shell but improve the parts inside? That's a whole other possibility as well. So, again, there's a lot of things here, a lot of smoke, a lot of interesting reports out there. And I feel like we are on the cusp of it being announced. Now, yesterday's rumor... <laughs> which whether or not you like the source or not, I, I think it's a really weird, strange source. I'll put a link down in the description to that. Um, they kind of basically say what I've been feeling this whole time is that when the calendar flips to 2021, we're going to start seeing leaks and rumors coming out about the Switch Pro again because I firmly believe Nintendo plans to announce this platform sometime in the first three months of 2021. But Nate, why not announce it now? I mean, holidays. They weren't going to have it ready for the holidays. Why put it up for the holidays? Why go head to head with PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X? We already see how hard it is to get those platforms. It's actually extremely hard to get a Switch. But Nate, why release a new Switch when it's so hard to get the current Switch? It's called maintaining momentum. You want to maintain momentum consistently. They're not, they're not going to come out with the Switch Pro and then just stop selling these Switches over here or stop selling the Switch Lite. They're going to keep selling them. That's not the problem. They want to provide a premium option that sets them up for the future. When the new Nintendo 3DS came out, folks, the Nintendo 3DS uh, was basically or selling the best it's ever sold at that time. It was peaking in terms of sales at that point. Then the new Nintendo 3DS came out and the peak went even higher. So what if Nintendo looks at, oh, we're going to sell 24, 26 million or so Switches in this fiscal year, but next fiscal year with the Switch Pro introduced, could we sell 25, 26, 30 million Switches combined across Switch, Switch Lite, and Switch Pro? Absolutely. freaking lootly So Nintendo might be looking at it as, why are we going to let our momentum peak? And then, you know, maybe even though I think Switch is going to do well next year, even without a Switch Pro, why let that momentum go to a point where it just starts to diminish? Why not, while the system's hot, strike? You know, they always say, strike while the iron is hot. Well, the iron is scorching for Switch. Why not strike now before the next gen hype really gets in the full cycle and those systems become readily available to purchase and let people know, hey, look, if you have a Switch, get excited because we have a new exciting Switch that if you care about better frame rates, if you care about a better screen, less bezel, you care about better joy kinds, you care about this, care about X, Y, and Z, whatever Nintendo AR functionality they might throw into in as well. You know, after they did the Mario Kart Live, I wouldn't throw it past them to advertise more AR functionality. I, I think that Nintendo is going to give us a reason to stay excited about Switch as these next-gen platforms become more readily available to purchase, and we obviously get more next-gen games, the Halo Infinite of the world, uh, the Forbidden West, all of that's cross-gen. Uh, so yeah, it, it's just something to consider. I think Nintendo is clearly setting things up to be this way. I think January, we're actually probably going to finally hear about a Switch Pro, and it also might be the same time we hear about, say, I don't know, Breath of the Wild 2. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there that like, I keep feeling that Nintendo is going to kind of hype up Switch Pro with Breath of the Wild 2. Try to repeat that 2017 banger of Breath of the Wild and Switch combined together. But we'll see. Again, we could talk for days about what the Switch Pro is going to be, how much more powerful it's going to be. Are there going to be exclusive games? Is Nintendo going to abandon the OG Switch family? Newsflash, that family is going to be crossing 80 million. Nintendo is not abandoning it. All their games, including Breath of the Wild 2, are going to be cross-platform, even if it came over to Switch Pro. Switch Pro is not a new generation. Think, think PlayStation 4 Pro. Think Xbox One X. Think new Nintendo 3DS. 99% of the library is going to be backwards compatible to the old system. So I, I'm, not, I'm not even worried about that, but I get it. Whenever something new comes, you worry about, well, what happens to what I just bought this holiday? I just bought that Mario Kart 8 bundle. What the hell? Don't worry. You'll be able to play games in it for the next, the next three years. You're good. You're good. You ain't going to have to worry about till like 2023, 2024 when the next gen Nintendo system, whatever it is, comes to market. And then it might not have support anymore. Anyways, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Where am I? Red, how festive for the seasons. Kind of reorganized my backdrop. It's like not organized for presentation purposes anymore. It's just organized uh, because I have a lot of crap and I have more crap I need to put. The shelves are already filling up. I'm going to have to get more shelves. 
Um, this is kind of like my console box graveyard at this point. You know, you see the three Switch boxes, Xbox One X, uh, my motherboard box here for my computer, uh, Xbox One X. Uh, that's actually the Asus thing. If you're wondering, what the hell is that Asus box? That's actually my router. Um, let me see. Uh, I got all my games now, which are directly behind me. So now you'll be like, Nate, do you even own games? I mean, yes. Let me move the mic. Yes. You see? You see? That's all my games. So we got like DS and 3DS games. We got uh, GameCube games. We got one Wii game, Sin and Punishment. Hell yeah. Uh, we got obviously our Switch collection there. And then we got some Xbox. And we got some PC. Uh, and we'll got a PlayStation 2 game in a sleeve somewhere. It's not in that collection. I think it's up, up on that very, very top shelf. So I kind of reorganized this. Got the LED uh, lights are working. Obviously, it, it, it's a little strange because like this doesn't look as bright as over here. I don't really know why that is. Um, I got this weird mic stand that keeps falling on me because it just doesn't like me. I don't know. The weight distribution is all messed up. Um, Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this new setup, me standing up for videos more. I want to be standing more for my videos, using my backdrop a bit more. There'll be times when I'll sit down at my, uh, I got a, a desk over here where we'll be tearing apart and unboxing things. Uh, we'll use that sometimes. I have a green screen. Right now, the green screen is pretty much down. I'm thinking of just taking the green screen down. I don't really um, have much use for it right now. I'm... I'm some people might wait. I kind of leave the green screen up because I kept hoping I'd bring back Prime News. I'm starting to think if I'm going to do Prime News... Um, I might just get one of those, um, like Elgato green screens that you can like leave on the floor and then just, whoop, you know, pop it up and then I can stand in front of it versus a whole wall. I think it's a waste of space. Plus, I could do something really cool with this wall over here. It's got some, it's got some stickers on it from Nintendo, but I think, um, I'm thinking of getting some nano leafs. I don't know when I'm going to get those, but, um, and doing like a whole LED wall back there. It's going to be really cool. It's going to look way cooler than the lighting back here. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.